Hello, everyone. And welcome uh, to uh, this service of sending and celebration for Ed Jansen. I am uh, Mary Brubaker-Zaire, the Director of Student Services for Conrad Grable University College. And on behalf of Marcus, uh, our president, Marcus Schantz, and our board of governors, and in fact, all of us who work at Conrad Grable, we are so glad uh, you are joining us for this service of sending and celebration for Ed. He has been serving our college for 23 years as our chaplain. If we were gathering in person for this event, I imagine there would have been lots of greeting and chatting, reconnecting and saying hello to one another even before the service began. In fact, it might have been difficult to get everyone seated and gathered. Unfortunately, COVID doesn't allow for such pleasures, but let's try to simulate this meet and greet kind of time. In just a moment, we're going to change you back into gallery view, and, and you can do that for yourself in the top right-hand corner under the view. And for about 45 seconds, you will be invited to casually scroll through the pages to see who else is attending this service. I invite you to maybe wave. Maybe you want to pop something quickly into the chat to say hello. I already see that Rob Pringle from Australia has done that. Uh, or maybe you want to private message someone. Feel free to do that. So let's, let's do that just now for just a brief few minutes. All right, let's come on back together. Well, I hope that as you scrolled through those pages that you saw Ed Jansen out there uh, in the crowds. Uh, but if not, Ed is actually here live in the chapel to bring his own, very own uh, warm greetings to you all. So over to you, Ed. Uh, I don't know whether to jump up and down with joy and wave at all of you page by page, but I do know for certain that today is a delight. It's a delight to greet you in this storied space. This is a place dedicated in various ways to challenge the mind, to feed the soul, to grow the heart, and to feel the ministrations of the Spirit. I'm thrilled to see you all once again, deeply, movingly, emotionally thrilled. And to see your faces, especially in this worship space, it's a profound opportunity to kind of bookend the experience of ministry here. And I'm further thrilled to share these moments in the presence of God with you. You are a sacrament of Christ's love. And you mean the world to me. And with those tears and my choked voice, I add my heartfelt welcome. Thanks so much for attending. Thank you, Ed. So while Ed makes his way back down to his office, uh, I just want to say a couple of other things before we enter in, into worship. 
Who are we today? Who has gathered on this screen? We are current and retired faculty and staff of Conrad Grable. We are current Grable students. We are alumni of the college, many of whom helped ed plan chapel services over the years. We are members of the Janssen family. We are colleagues of the University of Waterloo and the affiliated colleges of the University of Waterloo. We are from the Conference of Mennonite Church of Eastern Canada, MCEC. We are friends of Ed Jansen. And most importantly, we are a collection of people from far and wide who have been touched and influenced by the faithful and caring work of Ed over the last 23 years. It is good to be together. So thanks folks for coming to this service of celebration today. And just a few announcements for you. There should have been, or hopefully there was, an order of service in the chat room for you to look at and to open up. I recommend you actually open it and uh, put it into, uh, onto your computer so that you can follow along. The service will flow without announcing that who's giving, saying something and what's happening next. So please follow that order of service. Closed captioning is available for those that would like that. You need to go down to the, at the bottom of your screen where it says live, live transcript and you can click on that and get live captioning of this service if you'd like. You are all automatically muted and you will stay that way uh, for the remainder of the service. But the good news is at the very end, we are going to unmute you so that you can chat informally with one another and uh, connect with one another a little bit at the end. From this unmuted or from this muted uh, position though, I do invite you to participate. So please sing the hymns that, are, that we'll be singing today together. And when we have the litany, please uh, join in and speak the part that, that fits you. Uh, the chat room uh, is closed to you, uh, there might, uh, uh, except for the moment where you can get that order of service, uh, but otherwise the chat room will also be closed as of just in just a few seconds. Uh, and, but again, it will open up at the very end of the service. And finally, this, this service is being recorded uh, so that we can send it out to some people that couldn't participate today. So if you feel comfortable being recorded, uh, please keep your cameras and screen uh, pictures on. We love to see you. And if not, uh, feel free to turn your camera off and, and listen to the service this way. So thank you. Please join me now in a call to worship and opening prayer. We gather this day to acknowledge a threshold moment, a thin place between what's been and what's to be, between what's been accomplished and given in service with love and creativity and respect, and all the more there is to accomplish, to learn, to grow, and to serve. We gather this day to note a mile marker on Ed Jansen's journey that is coming to a bend in the road. A marker of a job well done, a faithful colleague, a friend, and a servant of God. We gather with a sense of gratitude and anticipation. Let's pray together. Creator God, keeper of this world and all that is within it, we give you thanks for the chance to gather from far and wide to celebrate the work of Ed Jansen and to release him now with joy and gratitude into a new chapter. We recognize compassionate God. 
that while we celebrate in worship this afternoon, many of us are doing so on the traditional territory of Indigenous peoples. As settlers, we know we have made serious mistakes and have responsibilities in the journey of reconciliation and healing. Forgive us, O oh God, and give us courage and strength and wisdom and grace to build a world where love can grow and where hope can enter in. Bless now this service and our time together as a gathered people. May it be pleasing to you. Amen. In that position of humility, recognizing that we are all guests here, we invite you to join the Grable Chapel Choir in singing our opening hymn. I am Kate Steiner, a professor of music uh, in the music department and director of the Chapel Choir, a choir that is offered by the music department with a mandate to serve the chapel services at Grable. As the director, I have had the privilege of working with Ed over the past three years. The Chapel Choir recorded this hymn, Let's Walk Together by Lori Zellman and Mark Miller in January, and it has become something of a theme for us at Grable. The refrain of this hymn, all of us are welcome here, reminds us that we are all guests. As you listen and learn, please join in singing.
I think I'm next. Um, and Mary had asked me to share a few words about uh, Ed's time here at Grable from, from, from the beginning. So Ed arrived at Grable uh, to serve as chaplain in 1999, uh, hired by then President John E. Taves. And prior to that, he had served in, in various other pastoral roles, uh, which included service with Henry Paitkow, I believe, at Grace Mennonite Church in the 1990s. And I believe he had also uh, uh, begun teaching sociology courses at Grable on a part-time basis before taking on the chaplaincy. And now here's a small digression that's important to me, if not to anyone else. Uh, Ed was briefly my boss uh, in the late 1990s when he served as the chair of the board of Silver Lake Mennonite Camp uh, and I worked as the camp director. The role of chaplain uh, is hybrid and multifaceted at Grable, encompassing pastoral care, planning and leading worship uh, with students, administrative leadership in the student services department, uh, and service on our college council and other uh, college committees. And added to this, Ed also made significant contributions to Grable's undergraduate teaching program throughout his service here, typically teaching well over 200 students per year uh, in Soch 101 and sociolog uh, Sociology of Mennonites. Beyond Grable, uh, Ed reached out to the wider campus through the University of Waterloo Chaplains Organization and through his participation on university-wide initiatives such as the Mental Health Wellness Collaborative. And in these involvements, he connected Grable in really important ways to a larger university community. And he helped us to extend our hospitality to that larger world. And one example of that is his initiative in hosting iftar meals at Grable during Ramadan in collaboration with the Waterloo Muslim Students Association. The chaplaincy is another way, an important way that Grable maintains its connection to the Mennonite church. And that's a role that Ed embraced with conviction and care through service on various MCEC committees and initiatives and through Grable's ministry inquiry program. All of this over 22 years gave Ed a unique perspective on Grable that few of us can reach and, and I'll miss that. I've only been here a few years, but I've uh, come to appreciate uh, Ed's integrated and grounded sense of how this quirky college works. And let's face it, it's a place that works in practice more than it works in theory. It's not a stretch to say that Ed embodies the spirit of this unusual place in lots of important ways. Ed's a sailor, which I think is more art than science, and it requires a lot of intuition. A sailor has to be mindful of the conditions around him and ready to adjust to changes in wind and weather. It's a craft that requires caring and a careful hand. And of course, a sailor knows very well that you can't always go in a straight line towards your destination. Sometimes you have to tack back and forth and zigzag in order to get where you're going. And you can see that sailor's skill play out and how Ed approached his work here at Grable, whether in individual pastoral counseling, leading worship in the chapel, or in his contributions to the many committees and councils here at the college. Ed finds a way from one place to another, even if to the untrained eye or ear, he seems to maybe be heading off in a different direction. Ed, we'll really miss you here and I'll miss you. And I hope your retirement is like a journey on a sailboat on an ocean of blessing. Please join the chapel choir in singing Guide My Feet.
true vine, and my father is the fine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. The word of the Lord. Ed Jansen grew up on a small family farm on the slope of the Niagara Escarpment near Beamsville. Along with a variety of fruit trees, there was a vineyard on that farm. It produced primarily table or eating grapes sold at local fruit markets. I can personally vouch for their sweetness. So Ed knows and understands from personal experience the, the agricultural lessons from the vineyard Jesus taught in this parable and their application to spiritual life. These lessons were reflected abundantly in Ed's own life, his preaching and teaching and chaplaincy ministry. Of the many lessons in this text, I will identify only two this afternoon. The first and arguably most important, given the frequency with which the word translated abide appears, is about a relationship, a vital connection. A connection and the distinction between the vine and the branches. Jesus says, I am the vine, abide in me as I abide in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Literally translated that last phrase, uh, apart from me, you can do nothing would be apart from me, you lack power or energy. 
energy to grow, to flourish, to bear fruit. This is the energy, the nourishment that the sap in the vine provides the branches. For the branch to live and bear fruit, it must abide in the vine. To abide means to remain, to stay connected. And in this instance, to be nurtured by the relationship with the divine source of life and love. And in the Christian faith, that source, the, the true vine of this parable is Jesus, the Christ. So long as the branches abide or remain in the vine, the sap flows freely and abundantly. And the branches do what branches do. They grow, produce leaves, blossoms, and eventually fruit. But only so long as they remain connected to or abide in the vine. That kind of abiding is a lifelong commitment and discipline. One of the developmental tasks during the young adult years at university is to discover and own that which brings ultimate meaning and purpose to life. Ed's role and goal as chaplain has been to help students discover the meaning and value of connectedness, of community, while on their educational journey and to encourage students to find meaningful ways of connecting with the divine source of life, the true vine, which brings deeper and lasting purpose and meaning to life while they are making important career and other life choices. This parable reminds us that a meaningful and purposeful life is about connection more than competence or independence. Chapel services provided a significant form in which Ed invited the Grable community to discover, explore, and nurture the power of abiding, abiding of the in the love of God in Christ. A second lesson from this vineyard is that healthy, productive, fruitful growth requires pruning. Every branch that bears fruit is pruned to make it bear more fruit. Now, this is a hard lesson. Why prune a perfectly healthy branch with all that new growth, which promises to produce big, healthy leaves, long branches from end to end? Well, because it's not about length, but about strength. And the strength of the branch is in its close connection to the vine, its life source. Fruitfulness of a vineyard is not about long branches and big, beautiful leaves, but about the fruit that the branches produce. The farther the end of the branches from the vine, its source of life, the less productive and fruitful it will be. The longer the branch, the more life-giving sap it requires to sustain itself to feed those leaves and the less it can direct to actual fruit production. Moreover, those big leaves it produces will shade the fruit from the bright sunshine needed to produce sweetness in the grapes. An experienced farmer knows that a branch that has grown two or three meters or more in one season will need to be pruned to less than one meter in order to send out new shoots and produce the best and juiciest fruit the next season. So it's not about long leafy branches. It's about strength and vitality for fruit production, which requires closer proximity to the vine. And that requires pruning. In a society enamored of unfettered growth, endless variety and seemingly limitless choices and opportunities, Consider limiting growth by cutting and pruning seems unthinkable. It, it sounds naive and impractical, callous even. Yet we know that limited time, energy, and resources 
demand careful investment in personal, professional, and relational development and growth. Growth that is healthy, sustainable, and fruitful. So for the branches on this vine, pruning is not punishment. It is discipline, and that includes self-discipline, setting healthy limits so that time and energy are focused on fruitful growth and a bountiful production of fruit, not merely an abundance of leaves. Ed has tended the spiritual vineyard at Gravel for more than 20 years. As chaplain, he has welcomed the gifts and participation of anyone interested in learning and growing and becoming more fruitful. Among those opportunities was planning, leading, and participating in chapel services. And as he gathered regularly with these leaders, he demonstrated the importance of connection, of personal relationships, and of pruning, of self-discipline, so that these gifts might be nurtured carefully and sustainably for healthy, fruitful growth and life. Thank you, Ed, for tending this vineyard with creativity, patience, wisdom, love, and care these many years. Amen. Ed's keen sensitivity to the beauty of creation showed up in many ways. I recall several chapel committee meetings that Ed ended with asking everyone to name a gift of creation as a blessing, a blessing of spring or the color blue. We were invited to laugh and to marvel at these small but tangible signs of God's love. This next hymn sung by a group of soloists from the chapel choir captures this lesson from Ed. Please listen. speaks to us in bird and song, in winds that drift the clouds along, above the din and toil of wrong, a melody God speaks to us in far and near, in peace Ed, one of my most distinct memories of you is from long ago chapel services during my own time as a Grable student, where you offered a kind and calm invitation to all present to experience the service and experience God in the way that was fit best for you at that moment. And if you just needed to close your eyes and experience God ministering to you, what you might need most is a holy nap. To my recollection, I never did take a holy nap during chapel, but your careful, intentional work 
to create a space where people's whole selves were welcomed in worship left a very lasting impression on me. I think of our Mennonite Anabaptist faith as a movement in which there are different actors, institutions, congregations, people, organizations that have different roles in shaping and leading and guiding it. And with your years of service as chaplain at Grable and as an ordained Mennonite pastor, you've had a significant impact in shaping the values, the skills, the aptitudes of so many people in our Mennonite movement and beyond. People who are going on to lead worship in their congregations, who are volunteers and board members, whether that's on a church council or in community organizations, faith-based organizations. People exploring a call to ministry may be going on to serve as pastors and people who are exploring their own personal understandings of their values and beliefs and looking at how they want that to shape their lives. And on behalf of Mennonite Church Eastern Canada, I want to thank you for your legacy of mentorship and leadership development. You held space, you invited others in, and you inspired countless students on their personal faith journey. So blessings to you and congratulations on your legacy of, of leadership development, mentorship and inspiration. Tuma Mina is a song that was created in South Africa and is sung in many church celebrations around the world. The Zulu words Tuma Mina, send me Lord, are commonly used in South African songs as a way of empowering the people to go out into the world following God's call to seek a more peaceful and just society with God's help. A choir of Ed's friends, colleagues, and Grable students sing Tuma Mina in gratitude for what Ed has taught us in his role as chaplain. Ed has practiced and pointed us to the mission of Grable to seek wisdom, nurture faith, and pursue peace and justice. As we listen, let us commit to carrying that mission on. Tu ma mina, tu ma mina, tu ma mina, tu ma mina, so ma Well, that was wonderful to uh, see that choir come together. 
Conrad Grable faculty member Carol Penner uh, kindly wrote a litany of release for Ed and for all of us. Thank you, Carol, for doing that. There are about nine different voices that you will hear. From where you are, though, please read with the person on the screen according to your connection or connections with Ed. That means you might read at different points in this litany of release. This is an important litany because we all need to help release Ed into uh, this next chapter. I'm just waiting for the litany yeah, to be shared. There we go. All right. Thank you. For everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. There is a time to arrive and a time to go. A time to be called and a time to say goodbye. Today, we mark the end of Ed Jansen's role as chaplain at Conrad Grable University College. It is time to say thank you, Ed. Thank you for your 23 years of faithful service, for your spiritual leadership and your wisdom. Thank you for your diligence in studying scripture, and discerning God's word for us and with us. You have been a blessing to our community. Ed, thank you for sharing your stories and your insights. Thank you for the way you cared for us in every season, through our joys and struggles. You always had time for us. Ed, as we served God together, Gather here at the University of Waterloo, you have blessed us with your collegiality. Ed, we know how hard you worked and what this ministry means to you. You truly cherish those in your care. You are a good and faithful leader. And as you lay down this role as chaplain, and give up these responsibilities. There is sadness because we will miss you. You have meant so much to many here. It was a joy to serve you in this way. For all the stories you shared with me, thank you. For all you taught me, thank you. For the rich memories I carry with me, thank you. For the ways God's grace has sustained us all, I am so thankful. This community has been a blessing in my life. And as we say goodbye after this ministry well done, it is time to wish you well. God has blessed your coming here. God is blessing this goodbye. And God will bless you as you go from here. May you find time to reflect on all that you learn from us and with us. May you find new opportunities for living out your faith that uses your gifts and gives you joy. May you find time for rest and relaxation and may new activities and adventures bring, bring you every happiness. Why am I not reading? Mm -hmm. And may God bless you and keep you. Go in peace 
with love and gratefulness of our whole community. Amen. Please join the Grable Chapel Choir as we sing a parting blessing for Ed and for each other. Well, before I close in prayer, just a couple of things you need to know about the ending of the service. After the prayer, the chat room will reopen and you are invited to fill it with comments and words of gratitude for Ed. As you do that, we hope that you will enjoy the music of Lyndon Brad and Paul, some jazz musicians who worked with Ed each year to host an Advent Vesper service here at the college. When their music is done, it's about four minutes long, you will be unmuted and then you can, you're welcome to linger in on the Zoom call if you'd like or Feel free to leave at that point, but if you want to linger, we will leave uh, the Zoom open for a little bit for you just to visit informally with one another. So as we end this service, please folks pray with me. Wonderful and caring God. Thank you for being with us. We know, O oh God, that the only constant thing in this universe is change. We know that what the one thing we can predict, predict is that our lives will be unpredictable. And we know, precious God, that you promise to be with us through it all. As Ed now transitions into the mystery, into the excitement, and into the unknowns of retirement, may you bless him and keep him and make your face to shine upon him. And may he know your grace, O oh God, and your loving kindness. Amen.
thanks again, everyone, for coming. Uh, this is where it's all a bit a little bit awkward, where we're all staring at the screen. Uh, but we did want to leave a moment for people if they wanted to give a shout out to Ed and, and, uh, uh, and talk informally. So we'll do that for a few moments. And let me be the first to break the awkward silence. Uh, the, there, there are few words that, that will at least speak um, what's on my heart now. And probably tears are better, <laughs> are better than words. Thanks to each and, one of, each and every one of you for, for making the time. There have been few times in my life where the tears flow as freely, and I count that as grace of God at this point in time. It has been a kindness to receive your words, your music, and your presence. Thanks so much for coming. It's an overwhelming time. So now I'll stop talking because I can't anymore. <laughs> Mary, you may need to run over with the, the Ministry of the Kleenex Box. That's true. I just should do that right away. <laughs> which, which was Ed's ministry on move-in day for so many people. Uh, we'll miss you on that day and many other annual events. Ed, blessings to you as you uh, sail away, brother. It is so wonderful to see, I, Ed, I hope you're scrolling through and can see all of these Grable alum on the screen. Uh, thank you uh, for coming, uh, Grable students. Um, we miss having you at the college and we hope that you are all doing well in your different corners of, of Ontario and beyond. I, I want to add my blessings to you, Ed. I, I was there on the search committee in the previous mm -hmm. millennium. Um, <laughs> that's how long it's been. Uh, anyway, a lot of wind in the sails for you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ed. Um, I had the pleasure of being at Grable with Ed during my undergraduate degree and being part of chapel committee and um, hot topics, our discussion group, and going on Ed's boat and participating in a book study. And you helped me define my theology. Um, you helped me really find myself. And I think you helped so many people find themselves. Um, and you gave excellent breakup advice, <laughs> um, which was hilarious and amazing. <laughs> and there's still so many things that you said to me during my undergrad that I remember today um, and continue to think about. So all the best. Thank you. Not being able to visit Grable right now, it's uh, it's so nice to see you Ed, in, in your office and in the chapel space, and just brings back so many memories. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's sad, sad to not be there now to, to sort of be there with you to, to, to send you off, but it's good to at least uh, have this opportunity to say hi and see you and see the space and uh, remember all those good times. All the best, and, and we will prove that COVID is not dominant, absolutely. <laughs> Amen. Ed, I've loved getting to know you over the past two years, and I am very sad that you're leaving <laughs> partway through for me, but I'm also very happy for you, and I hope that you have a lovely retirement and get to do all of those fun hobbies that you've mentioned and go on your boat and all of that. Take 
Ed, thank you so much for uh, everything. I mean, I would not have come into Grable if it wasn't for you. I met you as my social prof and I thought you were so cool. And, um, <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I really don't think uh, I would have even found my way here in MCEC. So thank you for being such a gift. Thank you for giving us all of you. I'm so thankful for your emotions. Um, and yeah, I'm praying for the best and as you lead into the next stage of your life. And thanks for the ministry of the word, Yamstra. Someone who reads scripture as you knows it by heart. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamara, if you don't know me, and I was both a student um, when great, well, when Ed came, I was in second year um, and then also worked in student services for a few years, um, among other connections. Um, and I was trying to think about what memory to share, Ed, and I think two pieces from when I was a student, I think your support of vocational development, I think, it cannot be overstated for people. And I think for me personally, uh, you had a persistence <laughs> 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 about um, affirming um, a sense of call within me that I wasn't always as readily willing to uh, admit to. Um, so thank you for all your support and, and humorous persistence. Um, and in terms of pastoral care, so my father died while I was in university and I won't ever forget the moment I told you, Ed, and it was the first time a pastor ever swore in my presence, um, a light <laughs> swear. Um, <laughs> um, but it was exactly the right thing to say and it was exactly what I needed to hear. And I think that um, authenticity and just, I think you were just free with I don't know quite how to put that quality, um, but um, yeah, but you were able to show care with a freedom uh, beyond uh, perhaps all assumed norms um, that allowed the spirit to live through you, I think in significant ways. Um, so thank you for the care over the many, many years. And uh, I look forward to continued connections uh, in the community in the years ahead. Truly, you're welcome, and thank you, and sorry about the persistence. Briefly, one of the things that uh, really stood out to me when I... Uh, first met you and then begin to interact with you, Ed, was, I want to call it uh, an ennobling pillar. Uh, Grable alumni, I realized that Grable was this kind of safe haven, not only from campus, but also from, from the rest of the, of the world during university. It can be a quite scary time. And a lot of us seem to think that that just poofs out of thin air. But that's not the case. The fact of the matter is, is that's carefully constructed, carefully crafted, and carefully protected. And Ed, you were one of those ennobling pillars, right? From the, uh, the little office space, you were upholding that um, sheltering, I guess, home base. And all the things about Grable, the Grable that give it its comfy sitting by the crackling fire and middle of winter, all those sorts of things uh, emanated from, well, the offices of Ed, also from Mary, also from Pam, that, that entire area. So thank you for that, because it certainly changed my life. And I see a lot of other people on here that probably changed theirs as well. You're welcome, Matthew, and happy to be thought of as a pillar. Let's make that an ionic pillar, shall we? or it could be Doric, I'm fine with that too.
Hi, Ed. Um, I hope you can hear me. Mm -hmm. uh, I can assure you that I've not done anything for as long as you've been doing this rather than breathe. Um, <laughs> but uh, I remember fighting with you in the first few months uh, of my 1A term, and yet you still loved me. And uh, I'm a much better person for that. So thank you so much. You're a worthy, a worthy interlocutor. And it's uh, been a blessing to me as well. Please don't encourage that behavior. I'll just say, Ed, um, from our first meeting, um, talking about uh, Oreos and hamburger toppings, um, to our, our last occasion um, where I um, spoke out of turn to much delight of the crowd, um, as I said my wife's vows instead of hers, or instead, of, uh, yeah, rather than her saying hers. Um, uh, it's uh, been a blessing to have been uh, under your tutelage uh, and to participate in the programming. Um, I will always cherish the time that we had together. Thank you. Indeed and indeed, from such a distance. Thanks, Rob. And the thought... <laughs> Hi, sorry, I'm on two devices here because of bad Wi-Fi issues. But um, the thought came to mind to mention um, just how grateful as a student it has been um, for the ways in which you come and meet students where they are and how um, you made the extra effort to reach out to the margins of students in order to make sure that everyone felt seen, everyone felt heard, um, and that everyone could come to you if they um, needed a support system. So I just wanted to say thank you for that, that extra care you put into being there for everyone of this community. Thank you. You're welcome, for sure. Hi, Ed. Ananya. It's so sad to see all the books kind of dwindling down behind <laughs> you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the litany was very accurate when it said you always had time for us. And that's been really special in the last two years for me, for sure. I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. And it's such a privilege to be in that trusted space. Um, I don't take it for granted. Uh, and it has taught me more of what it means to be human and to find love. Oh, you're welcome and thank you. Hi, Ed. Um, so sorry, I can't put on the, the video because I'm avoiding to, uh, to have any emotion, <laughs> any <laughs> emotional breakdown on the camera. Um, but I wanted to remind you of, of the moment when I came to your office first when I was coming to, um, in my mind, I thought I was coming to interview for the marketing assistant job. And, uh, and I was really, really sick. I had, a, uh, I think it was a cold or it could have been flu. And, um, and, I, and it was really cold day, that day. And so I, I came and uh, I was sick and as a, I came to your office and, and in my mind, I was thinking, oh, I hope this interview is not long because um, I, I don't want to spend so much time with him. I don't want to make him get sick. And so, and so when I got to your office and you, you, you said, oh, I read, your, I, I, I read your resume or whatever I had submitted. And you say, oh, you have the job. I just want to know if you, if you want to take it. So it was really a very short process. <laughs> and... Uh, and, and I was grateful for one thing that I'm not gonna spend a lot of time uh, speaking to him, uh, uh, getting him sick. 
but at the same time I was, uh, because that was my first uh, Canadian experience of going to job interviews, like, wait, that, is this how we, we get jobs in this country? Because <laughs> it had taken me forever. <laughs> so it was uh, a very um, a very interesting experience, but at the same time, I, it, it, you weren't paying attention, but there was so much was, so much was going on in my mind. Um, and it, 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 it was a very, um, uh, I remember you being kind and really open and welcoming and, uh, and, and, uh, and when I told, uh, the Red Cops that I was going to work with you, uh, they are very f- fond of you, uh, the sons and the daughter and, and the, and the parents. And so they, uh, I, I was really glad that I was going to work with somebody uh, in that capacity, who was uh, who was well known to be um, a very uh, different person, but I also want to highlight uh, when people are talking about how you have you have been very intentional on highlighting the uh, the critical issues affecting people uh, at the margins. Um, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to research. Um, uh, the different ways um, the global community can engage in, in the work of anti-racism, and uh, and, and uh, you you were at the center of uh, you were leading that process, uh, and I remember you asking really careful questions um, and and uh, engaging all of us to try to 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 know how best we can uh, continue the work of um, uh, anti-racism. So I want to thank you. Uh, for that, uh, for centering that, uh, it is important for so many uh, 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 students and faculty and, and staff who who are, are members of marginalized groups. And so, I, I want to thank you for that as well. Uh, thank you for being kind. Thanks for your kind words. And sometimes it's important just to get out of the way so that those who have the skills and know how can do. Thanks for doing. You did well. Well, folks, I think that um, it's been wonderful to hear your thoughts and comments for Ed. And um, thank you for joining us on the Zoom. But I think we'll wrap it up now. Uh, and but do so wishing you all well and letting you know that if you still have things you want to say to Ed, uh, there's an online tribute page where you can write some comments down. Uh, you can email him. Uh, I'm sure he's happy. We'll be thrilled to hear from you. So again, thank you folks for joining us. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>